Welcome to Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S. Evolution of and Trends in Healthcare in the U.S. This is Lecture B. The component Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S. is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and how services are delivered in the U.S. It covers public policy, relevant organizations and their interrelationships, professional roles, legal and regulatory issues, and payment systems. It also addresses health reform initiatives in the U.S. The learning objectives for this unit, Evolution of and Trends in Healthcare in the U.S., are to describe the application of evidence-based medicine and clinical practice guidelines, discuss quality indicators in medicine, and describe the patient-centered medical home and other models of care coordination. This lecture will continue the discussion of clinical practice guidelines, which began in Lecture A. As we saw in the last lecture, clinical practice guidelines are systematically developed statements that help the clinician and the patient make decisions about appropriate health care under specific clinical circumstances. These guidelines are recommendations which are based on evidence that usually has been gathered by conducting a systematic review of the medical literature. Guidelines define the role of specific diagnostic and treatment modalities in the diagnosis and management of specific diseases. Why do we need clinical practice guidelines? They serve an important purpose by helping clinicians and patients collaborate to make appropriate decisions about specific instances of patient health care. Guidelines achieve this by specifying a set of generally accepted, rational approaches for diagnosis management or prevention of specific diseases. And they define appropriate practices that address the needs of almost all patients in almost all circumstances. A number of clinical practice guidelines have been developed, and these are available for dissemination on the Internet. For example, the National Guidelines Clearinghouse can be accessed at www.guideline.gov. A major force in the development of clinical practice guidelines is the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force, or USPSTF. This is an independent panel of experts who are drawn from the prevention and evidence-based medicine communities. Composed of primary care providers, the members of the USPSTF conduct scientific evidence reviews on a broad range of clinical preventive health care services. They then help to develop recommendations for clinicians, health systems, and even for national agencies. The recommendations of the USPSTF on healthcare services are categorized by grade. Grade A has a high certainty of substantial net benefit for the service, and the recommendation would be to offer or provide this service. Grade B has a high certainty of moderate net benefit or moderate certainty of moderate to substantial net benefit for the service and the recommendation would be to offer or provide this service. A grade C recommendation from the USPSTF suggests that the recommendation should be tailored for individual patients and circumstances, since there is at least moderate certainty that the net benefit is small. These services should be provided only if other considerations support offering or providing the service for an individual patient. A grade D is a recommendation against the service. If there is a moderate or high certainty of no net benefit, or if there is some degree of evidence that harm outweighs the benefits, then the USPSTF discourages the use of the service with a grade D recommendation. The USPSTF also has an I statement, where it concludes that evidence is insufficient to assess the balance of benefit and risks of the service that is being considered. This suggests that either the evidence is lacking, is conflicting, or is of poor quality, and that the balance between benefit and risk cannot adequately be determined in a rigorous fashion. The suggestion for practice with the I statement is that if the service is offered, patients should understand the uncertainty about the balance of benefit and harm. Another framework used to assess evidence and clinical practice guidelines is called the Grading of Recommendations Assessment, Development, and Evaluation, or GRADE. In the GRADE framework, 
Studies are graded for risk of bias, especially those using lower quality study designs as defined by the previous slides. This concludes Lecture B of Evolution of and Trends in Healthcare in the U.S. In summary, this lecture defined clinical practice guidelines and described the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force and the USPSTF Grades of Evidence.